Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. We are delighted that you are here to worship God with us today. <clears throat> Just a few announcements as we begin worship today. Women in Touch, which is a weekly prayer and spiritual growth group for women, uh, they're going to resume on Wednesday, February 23rd at, at 1 p.m. And so if you need some more information about that, see Melissa Hamrick or Eunice Holt. Uh, we'd love to have some, some ladies join you, uh, join them on, on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock in the education building. Would you like to join our church uh, next Sunday? We're going to have several new members joining, and so if you've been thinking about joining officially uh, to our church, we'd love to have you. Just let me know, and uh, we'll make that happen next Sunday. Um, if you have any high school seniors, uh, take a note of the, the announcement in the bulletin about scholarships. Uh, you can see that. All of the uh, church t-shirts that we've ordered are, are here, and I think everyone that pre-ordered picked them up. We have some extras over uh, in Langford Hall, so feel free to go through those and, and get an extra shirt or a shirt if you didn't pre-order one. Uh, they're available. Uh, this evening, we have a chili cook-off, and I think Xavier's going to come and share a little bit about that. It's, gonna, it's good to have a, be able to have some fellowship activities going on. There we go. Uh, so tonight the youth will be having a chili cook-off in Langford Hall. Uh, we request that all the chili be here by 4.30 and we'll be voting on it at 5. All the donations that will be taken from the chili cook-off will be used for mission trips and events for this year, 2022. All right. So uh, this afternoon, if you're bringing chili, have it here by 4.30 and 5 o'clock if you're just coming to eat the chili. And so, uh, so come join us over in Langford Hall. It should be a, should be a lot of fun. Uh, young, our young adult group, the Breakaways, uh, they meet on Tuesday nights at 6, but you see in the bulletin they have a special event coming up on March 4th. Uh, confirmation class, if, you're, if your child or grandchildren are in confirmation, we're meeting today at 4. Uh, so just a note about that. Any other announcements this morning? Again, we are uh, so glad and so blessed to have you here, and let's begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Father, we're grateful to gather in your name. Uh, Lord, we're thankful for your spirit in this place and pray that your spirit would fall fresh on us this morning as we worship you. Lord, free our minds of all distraction and Lord, help us to give you our very best because you're worthy of our very best. We worship you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as you're able for our, our opening hymn, Love Lifted Me. It's hymn number 30. Well, it's not in your hymnal. It's going to be on the screen. Let's stand together and sing.
Saints, Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite our ushers forward for the morning offering. Let us pray. Father, we come now to return a tithe and an offering to you. We pray that you would bless these gifts, multiply them, and bless the giver in Jesus' name. May be seated. I'll invite our children forward for children's time this morning. And guys, you're in for a treat. We've got we've got Chef Luigi here. It's going to be really good. Come on down, have a seat. Actually, you might want to sit down front here. Let's sit down front today. Yeah.
Hello, hello. How are y'all today? Hey, that's all. It's a perfect dog. This is, a, I'm a Chef of Luigi. Excuse me. Chef Alexi Luigi. I'm a, uh, I run a restaurant around town and uh, in Booger Harbor. Uh, oh, me. Well, we're going to have a great day today. We're going to talk about what we do when we say, Jesus, I love you. How you act when you, after you say, I love you. And all those things that you need to be doing. Okay? You like that? Good. Because that's what you're going to get whether you like it or not. <laughs> all right. I want to help y'all. Make sure that you understand exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to make up a Jesus cake. Okay. Here we go. First thing, if you need for a Jesus cake, you got to have what? Jesus. Jesus. All right, we'll put him right there. And then you got to have y'all, young, a little girl and a young boy. All right, we got to have those. We're going to work on making a Jesus cake. First thing you got to do, well, I remember what the preacher told us last week. Uh, my friend Alex, he said, the preacher talked about a book. A book. What was the book? The Bible. The Bible. That's right. It's the book of love. And when y'all are growing up and you say, Jesus, I love you, you're going to have a Bible, aren't you? You are. And you start out with the Bible for little ones. And then, oh, I better move my spoon. And uh, then you go to the beginner's Bible when you get a little bigger. The pictures get bigger and the words get better. All uh, right, then you go, oh, uh, it's always important to have your first Bible. Your first Bible. And, and then, uh, guess what? Guess what? Then as you get older, you get this Bible. You get this Bible. And this is the older people's Bible, and it comes with a pair of glasses. <laughs> By your cost, you can't read it, can you? You have to look at it this way instead of that way. You got to look at it. And some of the words are in red, and you really have a hard time looking at it. All right, we're going to make a little bit of Jesus uh, cake here. What do you got to have? You got to have... What does that say? You got to pray. You do, do you think to pray? Do you pray? Yeah. How you pray? Everybody. One. Up. Two. Up. You two. Out there. Up. <laughs> Put them together. Drop them. Now we pray. Okay, Luigi done taught somebody how to do something. He's a happy. That's my recipe for life. Okay, now you got, you got to believe because Jesus loved you. He died on the cross. He did, he did. All right, you always remember that. And if you believe in Jesus, you always have what? Faith. Very good. Raise your right hand if you have faith. Hold it this way. I have faith. Say that. I have faith. Okay, here we go, here we go. And above all, you got to have what? Love. And it's right where? Right to here, right into your heart. Right to there. It goes boom, 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 boom. And every time you get closer to Jesus, that's what happens. Okay, we got a few more things. Oh, you go to church, don't you? And you bring your offering. Do you bring big dollar bills? No. What do you bring? Nickels, dimes, and quarters. So there they are. You bring change. Put it in the offering plate. You got to make it. I'm going to stir that a little bit. It's getting a little thick. About a story. Don't want it to get overheated. All right. I got the one the last thing I got to put in there. What's that say? 
Let your sun shine. Put a smile on your face. Yeah. Let your sun. What in the world are y'all doing? Oh. Make sure the next time you smile, to brush your teeth. Here we go. You gotta smile. You gotta smile. Okay, let the sun shine. Oh, you got a few more things. Oh, look what I found in here. Oh, it's the good stuff. It's the good stuff. It's like putting onions and stuff like that in your stew. Then you put this in. You put a little Bible. You put a little thing that says, I'm with Team Jesus. Oh, Lord of Lords. I love God. Oh, I love it, I love it. Our God is what? Awesome. Yeah, he is. Thank God for every day. Oh, oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, Luigi always likes it because Jesus loves me. He loves me. And let your light shine. Uh, uh-oh. Are all of y'all on the God Squad? You're on the God Squad. I love God. And Rachel. Oh, that's all we can put in here today. I don't think. But guess what? You go to children's church, you're going to get a piece of the Jesus cake. You're going to get a piece of the Jesus cake. Miss Sarah knows how to fix it. Uh, all you got to do is put this in your oven. Where's your oven? You put it in your heart. And it's in the oven. And it cooks. And she's going to give you a piece of the Jesus cake. You know what Luigi did? Luigi wrote a prayer for all the children and all of you to remember. Okay? Everybody? Bow your head. A little bit to me and a whole lot of Jesus means I love you more each day. No matter what the cost, I know I'm never lost. Jesus, I am a hero to stay. I am your child, dear Jesus, and love being a small part. Help me as I grow and I stay here in my heart. Amen. Amen. Love you. Go to Children's Church and have a piece of Jesus cake. Uh, okay. We're going right away, right? Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Luigi. Excuse me, Alexis Louise. Alexa Luigi. great that's great as we come to our prayer time this morning uh, please see your bullets in the many prayer requests there um, want to keep the family of George Jacobs in your prayers George is a, a member of our church uh, uh, he passed away on Friday but the visitation will be tonight at 7 at Lynn Honeycutt and the funeral will be tomorrow at 2 at Lynn Honeycutt so keep the, the family of George Jacobs in your prayers also had a prayer request for Sally Richards and uh, certainly for uh, George Beaver as well. Uh, George is in the hospital and really needs our needs our prayers for prayers for George and Debbie and the whole family. Are there any other prayer concerns or praises to lift before our, our church family this morning? All right. Well, let's bow in prayer. God, it's good to be here in your house, uh, Lord, with our with our family. It's good to laugh, and Lord, we're thankful for the. The joy of our, our children and uh, Lord just getting to, to share the good news of, uh, of, of your son Jesus and Lord what joy it, it brings to our, our life and into our hearts and 
Uh, Lord, for the many servants that are uh, willing to, to come and to just be your hands and feet and to teach our, our children and, and bring a smile to our face as well. Lord, we worship you and we praise you. Lord, you are so good and you're worthy of our worship. You're worthy of our praise today. Uh, Lord, we come with many things on our hearts and minds. And uh, Lord, we know that, that nothing is impossible for you, that nothing is too big or too small for you. You're God of, of all things and you're able to do infinitely more than we could ever ask or pray for. But we just come leaning on you and trusting you for all of our troubles and problems and perplexities, for the ailments and sickness that so many have. Lord, we come just asking that you would pour out your presence, pour out your healing upon us. Lord, we give thanks to you. We worship you. We acknowledge you today. And now, Lord, we invite you to look inside of our hearts and minds. And, Lord, you know that we are sinners. We've fallen short. And, Lord, we just seek forgiveness for the times that we failed you and sinned against others and you. But in the same breath, Lord, we are so thankful for your grace and your mercy. God, help us to be the disciples you'd have us to be. Lord, mold us into the, the people you'd have us to be, the Christians, the, the mothers, the fathers, the grandparents that we would, you would have us to be. Lord, help us to be intentional about growing in, in our faith, growing closer to you, making you a priority in our lives, seeking you first in your kingdom and in your righteousness. Lord, we are thankful for our church, and Lord, we also pray for our church today. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen our church, Lord, that we might grow and continue to serve those around us and show them your love. Lord, help us to be sensitive to your leadership and your guidance. God, we pray for our country, for our leaders, for our servicemen and women who put themselves in harm's way for our protection. Lord, may you watch over them. We pray for an outpouring of your healing. Lord, we pray for revival in our land. And last, Lord, I pray for the message that you've given me this week, Lord, that it might be effective and accomplish your purpose. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come choir.
So we're beginning a new sermon series called First Comes Love, Then Comes Marriage. I know it's February and Valentine's Day was last week and love is in the air, right? So I'm really committed. I think it's, it's just healthy in the, in the rhythm of the church to do at least one sermon series a year on marriage because marriage is so important. Uh, strong marriages lead to strong families and strong families lead to strong churches and strong churches lead to strong communities. And you see where I'm going here. Strong marriages are vital in the church. First comes love, then comes marriage. Today the title of my sermon is First Things First. And we're going to be looking at the, the gospel of Luke. We're going to be in Luke chapter 14 and we're going to be in the part of the Bible we know as, as the gospels. We know the Bible is not just a book, but it's a library of, of many different books, many different types of writing, many different styles of writing, written, written by many different authors over a long span of time. But we believe that this library is unlike any other on earth, that God, he breathed his truth onto its pages and his life onto its pages. Scripture is inspired, it's eternal, and it's true. And so we submit to the authority of God's word today, and we are eager and joyful about how the Spirit will be poured out on us today through his word. Before I go too much further, though, let's stop and, and pray together. And as you pray with me, don't forget to pray for me. Let's pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds together be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I've been in ministry for a while now. I think this year is my, my 15th year in, in ministry. And one of the things I love to do is weddings. Weddings, you know, it's always a, just a wonderful, joyful thing to, to, and a privilege to be able to officiate weddings. And when a couple comes to me and says, oh, I, it's time for us to get married. We, we would like to get married. Would you, would you marry us? I would I'll always say, sure, I'd, I'd be honored to. Uh, let's set the date and then uh, let's talk about when we can get together and, and talk, you know, to do some premarital counseling. Uh, and I, I think that's so important uh, in my role as, as pastor to sit down and, with husband and wife and talk through some things, not just to get to know them better, which is important. I, I enjoy getting to know them better and talking about the details of the, the wedding and the dates and all those things. But more importantly, to spend time with the couple talking about the importance and the sanctity of marriage, spending time really discussing the vows that they will be giving to one another. Uh, if you want to, pull out your hymnals <clears throat> this morning. Look on page 867, 867, or you can look on the screen. I, I did a cheat sheet because they're on here. But these are, the, these are the traditional vows, if you can see them on the screen, or, or 867 in your hymnal. Uh, these are vows that have stood the test of time. Uh, they're, they're, sol they're solid. Uh, these are the vows that have been used by millions of couples over hundreds of years uh, where they've recited these same vows. Occasionally, I'll allow couples to write their own vows, but I always say, well, make sure they're, they're based on, on these because these are kind of tried and true. They, they cover it, it all. And so there's a marvelous line of continuity of, of millions of couples and hundreds of years giving these vows at their marriage service. I've had one couple that, that told me they even framed their vows and put on the wall. I thought that was, that was really neat. You know, that's a, a way of saying how important these vows are. And so we have millions of couples over hundreds of years making these, these holy promises. And some of you know better than I know that these promises are not always kept. These promises don't always stand. Sometimes these promises are made but then the marriages don't stay together. And you know that maybe because you were a, a child and experienced that with your parents, or maybe you know that firsthand because you were a married person and now you're not a married person or you're a, a remarried person. For you, it was maybe first comes love, then comes marriage, and then came a complete disaster. These vows that we make, they're, they're important. And what I'm getting to uh, this morning is we have to prepare for marriage. It's not something to be taken lightly. Our culture, the world, wants us to say, you know, marriage is just something, you, you know, just some words you say, and then if you change your mind, you can change your mind. No, marriage is, is sacred. It's important. There's sanctity to marriage. First comes love, then comes marriage. I'm reminded of these, these vows, and, you know, as you look through them, uh, some of them are, uh, you know, they're, they're just, they describe what we do as, as husband and wife. To have and to hold, to have and to hold. I think about the guy who's at the, the counter of the cosmetic store and, and he's smelling the perfumes and the clerk comes up to him and says, 
are, are you going to buy something for your wife? And he's smelling perfumes. Yeah, yeah, it's her birthday. I'm really going to surprise her. Oh, that, that's great. You're going to surprise your wife. Yeah, she was expecting a cruise, but I'm getting her perfume. <laughs> to have and to hold. I guarantee you there wasn't any having or holding that night. Uh, uh, or sometimes, maybe it's a little more gradual. Maybe it's a little more gradual. We say things like, for better or for worse. Uh, for better or for worse. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse in marriage. I think about the couple celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary, and they're so excited they're going to have a big party, you know, celebrating their, their anniversary. And the wife, she's on the phone. She's, she's just kind of giddy talking to her friend. Oh, you wouldn't believe we're going to have a beautiful party. And I, I've got an outfit picked out, and I, I bought some new shoes for this party. They're beautiful silver and the husband pipes up and said, yeah, to match your hair. <laughs> for better, for worse. But she had the best comeback. She had the best comeback. She said, and that's why you're going to be wearing no shoes. You're going barefoot. Maybe that'll click here in a minute. Um, for better or for worse, to have and to hold. Now, I've made light of a few of these vows, but... You know that there's more and there's more serious. Some of you have been on both ends of the breaking of promises, forsaking all others and being faithful as, you, as long as you both shall live. Some have been forsaken. Some of you have been forsook. The results are not pretty. Some could hang in there for the richer part, but then the poorer part, and that was really tough. That was really hard. What I'm saying this morning is oftentimes there's an enormous gap between what gets promised, what gets vowed, and then what actually gets lived out. So in steps Jesus in a setting where he's not specifically talking about marriage, but at the same time it has everything to do with marriage. Let's go with me, if you can turn with me if you have your Bibles, to Luke 14, verse 28, starting at verse 28. Luke 14, verse 28. Jesus says, and he's teaching a, a parable here, he says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower, wants to build a tower. Now, what kind of tower is Jesus talking about? Is he talking about a tower like this, the, the Burj Khalifa? Y'all guys heard of this? This is, a, this is the world's tallest tower, right? you know, world's tallest structure. It's in Dubai. Anybody ever been there? All right. This is, is that what Jesus is talking about? No, not hardly. What Jesus is talking about is probably something like this, a watchtower. A watchtower that farmers would build above their vineyards so they could, they could look out above their crops and make sure that no one came in and, and stole their hard-earned crop. And so Jesus goes on. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Now that's a little hard for us to understand because we live in a credit-based economy where most people, you know, they may put a little bit down on a project, but then they finance the rest, you know, and kind of pay off the rest. But the day that Jesus spoke this and in the time that Jesus lived and really still in many emerging economies today, they don't operate that way. You have to have all the money up front before you start a project. That's why in places like Kenya and India and Central America, you'll see example after example of, of half-built buildings. You'll have construction projects that started, they intended well, they, they started well, maybe they had enough money to, to start and they, they planned enough to get, begin, but then at some point they were abandoned. They weren't prepared. They had to abandon the project and so they've left the, the landscape littered with half-built structures. I suppose the closest thing we have to this in our area is this building. Anybody know what that is? PTL, yeah, that's the, the Heritage, uh, what do they call that? The Heritage Tower. You guys remember, uh, maybe you don't, uh, back in the 80s, uh, you know, this scandal, Jim, uh, Jim Baker, the scandal 30 years ago, and they, all these promises that were made, but then they weren't fulfilled, they weren't kept. So you have towers like this. This is not far. This is, this is down by Carowinds, down in Fort Mill. This half-built building, you know, it's, it looks beautiful from the outside, but it's, it's rotting from the inside out, hollowed out. I can't help but think that this is a, an image of some of the marriages in the world. They were built with good intentions, but they didn't have the strength to endure. 
like buildings old and new, they, they get abandoned. And the gap between what was promised and the payoff proved to be insurmountable. You know, I, I've done a lot of weddings so far, and, you know, I've never heard a couple say this. I've never heard a bride or a groom say, well, I'm going to give you a great honeymoon, but then after that, I'm out of here. I've never heard a, a groom says, well, uh, I'm going to give you three good years, and then you're on your own. I'm going to give you a few good years, but when the kids come along, I, I, I'm out of here. I, I didn't sign up for that. I've never, never heard one, someone say, well, you can have me during my 20s, but, but in my 30s, I'm not forsaking others. I'm going to go and, and flirt with others and charm them. No one ever says that, but so many people do that. So what can we draw from what Jesus is saying here in the Gospels, this cautionary tale about building a tower? Let's continue on, verse 29. He says, for if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule, ridicule you, saying, the person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Ah, the promise has to be preceded by preparation. The foundation can't be set until the blueprint is drawn. You can't finish a project when you've only planned to start it. So here's what I think these words that Jesus spoke. He was speaking in parable. He was telling us about the, the costliness of discipleship and following, following him. But, but it's all so relevant to marriage. This is what I think Jesus was telling us. You need to prepare yourself before you promise yourself. Prepare yourself before you promise yourself. Because this is what I know from counseling married couples who are having some trouble. They don't have marriage problems. They have people problems. They have personal problems, many of which predate their marriage. And when they don't get those personal problems dealt with in meaningful ways, they bring them into marriages, maybe with another person who has problems, and then bam, they're in a collision course. Why? Because they spent so much time looking, so much time preparing for a, a a beautiful wedding ceremony instead of preparing for a beautiful marriage. They spent all this time promising and not enough time preparing, and the results sometimes were disaster. Prepare yourself before you promise yourself. I want to speak for a minute about those of you, and I know we're, uh, we have some young people here today, and if you have children or, or grandchildren, then tell them to go and watch Pastor Will's sermon on Facebook this week. You know, share, share the link with them, because I want to speak specifically to those that are thinking about getting married again, or uh, married for the first time. So, if you're not married, this is something I think you should do. I think you should get your pencil and your paper out, and, and I think you ought to start making a list of traits, of characteristics that you would like in a future spouse. And write those things down. Things like, you know, I want them to be, to be kind, financially stable, physically fit, patient, unselfish. They love Jesus. They love Jesus. That, that needs to go to the top of the list. Love Jesus. Not easily offended. They love Jesus. Did I say that already? Put that on the list. And then after you've made that list of what you would like in a person that you will marry, then you start the process of becoming that person. Because when I talk about preparing, I'm not just talking about going to premarital counseling together. I'm, I'm talking about preparing yourself emotionally, spiritually, financially for the second most important decision that you will ever make in your life. The first most important decision will be your decision for Christ, accepting him as your Lord and Savior. But the, the second most important decision in your life is who will be your spouse. And it'll take some steps to get there preparing yourself. It doesn't, it's not something you can do in a day. Preparing yourself before you promise yourself. It may take therapy, and that's okay. It may take some counseling. But better to address the wounds of the past now than on the other side of marriage. It may take joining a recovery group. It may, I tell you, it will involve getting in a church. It will involve being in a small group. It will involve getting in God's word instead of spending all your time in the world. And then there's the whole matter of, of discipline and purity. 
Discipline and purity, words that the, the world uses against the church, wor- words, words that the, the world uses to criticize the church, but words that we need to lift up as our identity. Discipline and purity. Purity. Because here's what I know. No one, when, when they're making that list of, of all the attributes and all the characteristics they want in a future spouse, nobody writes on their list, well, I want someone with an extensive sexual resume. Nobody puts that on their list. Nobody says, I want somebody with a, a long history, with lots of experience and a whole lot of partners. Nobody puts that on their list. That's not what they want walking down the aisle to them. Hey, if that's not what you're looking for, don't be that. Don't be that. And that's a decision you make right now. Not a decision you make in the heat of the moment next weekend for whatever you have planned. Prepare yourself before you promise yourself. I think there's a, a lot of guys and, and probably some, some girls as well, but maybe you think to yourself, well, I'm young, I'm just going to go out and really, really live it up. You know, while I'm, I'm young, I'm going to go out and sow my wild oats and, and have a lot of fun. And, you know, and, but when I get married, then, then I'll behave. Then I'll behave. Then I'll settle down. The church, that, that's a lie. That's a lie. It never works. Marriage doesn't fix bad habits. It only magnifies them. The oats that you sow, they they grow into weeds and they they choke out your capacity for authentic and genuine intimacy in the one place where God ordains it, in a marriage between a man and a woman. So make the list. Become the list. Prepare yourself before you promise yourself. Now for those of you that, like myself, that are already married, Maybe you realize now that preparing for a marriage is important. If you're in a healthy marriage now and you're, you're healthy and happy in your marriage, maybe you're looking back and realize, gosh, I guess we did something right. We prepared ourselves before we stepped into this. We really sought out and counsel and we, we grew as a, as a couple. We prepared ourselves before we promised ourselves. Or maybe you're realizing that you didn't prepare like you should and you've had some challenges. Well, that's okay. You can do preparation in reverse. You can do reparation. Things like, hey, start your day off in the word instead of in the world. Things like getting involved in church in a small group. Maybe it means counseling. Maybe it means therapy. And that's okay. Prepare yourself before you promise yourself. And church, I really long for us to have some, some biblical preparation. Some biblical preparation for marriage and knowing what the Bible says about marriage. Like, like guys, gentlemen... You know that the scripture says that you are the, the spiritual headhold of the house. You're not the ruler, you're not the dictator, but you are a sacrificial servant, a servant leader of the household. You're responsible for the spiritual temperature of your household. And wives, no, you're not supposed to be subordinate, but you are supposed to respect. Respect your husband. Every husband needs, respects, and longs for respect. Respect. Every husband craves respect, craves a defender. Megan and I have been together for 19 years, and uh, <laughs> this year, gosh, it doesn't seem that long. Uh, but uh, 14 years of those, have, we've been married. But you know, her support for me is, is unwavering. She always has my back. We need biblical awareness of what a husband is, what a wife is. And some of us have, have some makeup work to do to prepare ourselves before we promise ourselves because like I said earlier no one ever promises well I'll I'll give you a honeymoon great honeymoon and then that's it no one ever promises well I'll, I'll love you as long as it's convenient or I'll be faithful as long as I don't have any other options no that's not what the promise says that's not what the vow says the vow says till death do us part I suppose I saw that in action at a wedding I did several years ago at the reception, towards the end of the reception, I saw the, the father of the groom dancing with the, the mother of the groom very tenderly. And the one thing that I knew that many of the other people in the room didn't know is that the mother of the groom had Alzheimer's and it had progressed very rapidly. Many of you know that it's not easy caring for a loved one who has Alzheimer's. and It's aggravating, it's tedious, you never know if it's going to be a good day or a bad day. But here I saw this 
this husband dancing with his wife, the, the father of the groom dancing with the, the mother of the groom at the end of the wedding, holding his wife tenderly and carefully. And I thought to myself, you know what? That's a real man right there. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's also a real marriage. It's a real marriage. You have to prepare yourself before you promise yourself. Let me pray for you. God, we are thankful for the marriages in our church. Lord, the marriages that we have, uh, those that will be preparing themselves for, for a new marriage. Lord, I pray that we would be able to prepare ourselves before we promise ourselves. Or if we didn't do the, the hard work of preparing, maybe we can do it now, Lord, that we can repair. God, I pray that you would bless our, our marriages, bind us together, make them strong, that we might be have strong families and strong churches and strong communities that point others to you. God, as we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You stand with me for our closing hymn, and as always, the altar is open for any way you wish to respond. We're going to sing hymn number 408, The Gift of Love. Let us go forth to prepare ourselves before we promise ourselves. May God bless our marriages. Bless all of us. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.